Welcome everyone. Welcome to Three Things I've Learned with me, Susan Dolce, where we share the stories that shift our souls. So I cannot believe it's the middle of November already. In some ways, it feels like this year has dragged on. Uh, but then again, it still hasn't quite sunk in that Thanksgiving is next week. I know our Thanksgiving celebrations are going to look really different this year than from years past. We're going to have smaller gatherings. We're going to have smaller portions, probably. I even noticed in my local grocery store <clears throat> that um, they were offering cut up turkeys. Like, you know, you would buy a cut up chicken, but it's a cut up turkey. So to encourage people to have smaller gatherings and also so people don't feel so bad about, you know, cooking a big bird for small, for, a, for fewer people. So we have that. And it's also still really important right now to support our local food pantries because we still don't have a COVID relief bill. And many families are continually, continuing to rely on community support to get them through. In this traditional time of counting our blessings, it's maybe even more important than ever that we realize our fundamental human connection. And that's what I wanna talk about today. I think you might know, I've, I had other shows about it, but I'm Catholic. And we Catholics would say, it's about sharing your time, your talent and your treasure. So how can we look out for our neighbors and support our local communities during these uncertain times? What are we gonna do now? We've, we've been doing it a long time. It's been a long year, but we still need to find ways to, to support our communities. So <clears throat> I learned about this uh, movement uh, probably only a couple of years ago, but have who's heard of Giving Tuesday? Um, it's, it's also a hashtag, hashtag Giving Tuesday. And the idea, this was started uh, in 2012, um, with the idea to kind of counteract the consumerism of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So it always falls on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So, you know, you have Black Friday, crazy Black Friday, which, praise Jesus, I think we're going to have a new sort of <laughs> Black Friday this year, um, and then Cyber Monday. And so it falls on that Tuesday. This year will be December 1st. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here's what their website says. Giving Tuesday was created in 2012 as a simple idea, a day that encourages people to do good. Over the past seven years, it has grown into a global movement that inspires hundreds of millions of people to give, collaborate, and celebrate generosity whether it's making someone smile, helping out a neighbor or a stranger, showing up for an issue or people we care about, or giving some of what we have to those who need our help. Every act of generosity counts and everyone has something to give. So if you're feeling inspired that, by that idea, I think you'll be even more inspired by my guest today. Amy Fass is the CEO of the national nonprofit Shoes That Fit an organization that's been delivering shoes to children in need for over 27 years. Before becoming executive director in 2014, she'd been a consultant for Shoes That Fit since 2008. And in 2017, the organization was named California Nonprofit of the Year by the California State Assembly. As a mom and someone who spent a large part of her career in the education sector, Amy understands the importance of education and believes deeply in the Shoes That Fit mission, which is that all children deserve to attend school with dignity, joy, prepared to learn, play, and thrive. Please welcome Amy Fast to the show. Hey, Amy. I'm thank so you. glad you're here today. Oh, thank you. That's a great introduction. I appreciate it. So <clears throat> I'm very familiar with Shoes That Fit. Um, back in, uh, gosh, it was probably five years ago now, my daughter was student teaching at a school in New York City. And they had signs up all over. I think they were trying to, um, I think at that point they were, they were, it was new to them. And she was like, Hey mom, this is really cool. Like we need to start, we need to start doing this. We need to participate. And back then I remember we did it through Nordstrom. So yeah. I know it's very different now, but so how can you tell us how Shoes That Fit got started? 
So we started, as you said, it's been almost 28 years now, 28 years ago. Um, our founder had heard the story. She was talking to somebody who worked at a school in Pomona and there had a little boy who had been sent to the principal's office because he was crying and acting out. And when he got to the office, she, this woman had taken off his shoes and found that his toes had literally been turned under to make mm. the fit in his shoes. So he was in a lot of pain. It kept saying his feet hurt. The saddest part of the story is they gave him water, but they eventually had to put his shoes back on because you cannot be in school without shoes. So our founder was a very spunky woman. She was a single mom working two jobs. She knew that she did not have the money to solve this problem, but she also knew that she worked at a college here in Claremont um, and had a lot of coworkers and other people that she thought could make a difference. So they adopted that school, helped 40 children. She got the names of um, the children and the size of their shoes put them up in um, a, a common area uh, where they had their cafeteria. By the end of the day, all 40 cards have been taken. Um, she just had a simple sign that said, if you wanna make a difference in the life of a child, buy a pair of shoes today. And that's what they did. And that's how we started. It started as an all volunteer movement. And you measure right from Nordstrom, we've really grown in the last 28 years and work in a lot of different ways now. So, you know, you were talking about um, this poor, child and you know his his poor shoes I mean his poor toes like it just breaks my heart thinking of it and we always think like you know I've seen um the uh drives for backpacks I mean all of these things are important all these things um help but why why shoes how do shoes impact how do they make such a big difference I think there are a couple ways so that's actually the first question I often get asked is what why shoes um Shoes are really important to, especially to a child, to their kind of emotional health. Kids, you know, compare themselves with each other. And if you're wearing shoes that are falling apart or that smell really badly, it's mm -hmm. really hard to show up. Um, you have kids who are avoiding school, who are being feeling bullied. Um, shoes are one of the most expensive things for families to provide for their children. Kids grow quickly and they out and they outgrow them. One of the things we've heard during the pandemic, actually, interesting from food banks is second to food, which of course is the first request they get, the number one request they're getting are for shoes. Mm -hmm. um, they're just so foundational and most of us don't think about shoes, we have shoes, but if you don't, it's really hard to participate in life. Yeah, I mean, it, it breaks my heart to think about it and about uh, the, the kids being bullied for, mm -hmm. you know, for their worn out shoes. I mean, I remember that when my kids were going to school and, and it like, I know how excited I get when I get a new pair of shoes. I know, I remember when my kids, like they didn't, you know, if they lit up, if they didn't care, it was new shoes and they were so excited and all the other children would be like, oh, did you get new shoes? Yeah. So it does, it's huge. It plays a huge, huge part in a kid's life. So the, one of the things I'm still trying to understand um, and would really like to learn more about, we're probably gonna have to take a break in between this discussion, but how, how do you how do you find the schools? How do people get involved in their local schools? Uh, how do you choose the schools? Yeah, that's a hard one. So when we um, we are donor driven in many ways because what we do is we try to help people help in their own communities. People really want to invest um, in the people that live around them and feel like they're making a difference in their community. So we will work with volunteers or corporations, companies um, who want to help and we help identify schools that have large percentages of children are free and reduced lunch programs or other indicators of need. Um, and we match them up with that school and the teachers are the ones who identify the children most in need. We don't actually work directly with families. Mm -hmm. It works through schools or other nonprofits. And they're the ones who know the circumstances that these kids are coming from and who's really in need of shoes. And then the donor will let us know if they want to help 15 kids in a school, if they want to help the whole school. It just, we, we run the gamut. So we, have, we still have volunteer chapters across the United States who are helping kids in their own community, but we also have large companies um, who are you know, for you had mentioned Nordstrom, who was matching up their stores with schools in those communities and, and keeping the shoes right there in that community. It's a huge, it's, it's, it sounds like a huge undertaking and it sounds like it requires a, a lot of, um, a lot of dedicated people. Uh, I wanna, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, I wanna know, um, I want to talk about, like I said, how do you choose the schools? But like, if it, let's say I want to, let's say I want to be one of those people 
how do I, where do I go? How do I find uh, how I can put myself, you know, to serve this, this charity? So we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Three Things I've Learned with Susan Dolce, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to Three Things I've Learned with me, Susan Dolce. And today I am talking with the CEO of the nonprofit, Shoes That Fit, Amy Fass. And part of the reason um, I wanted to uh, highlight this today was because obviously we're coming, we're in the holiday season. It starts next week, right? Or maybe it starts with Halloween now. I don't know. Anyway, um, and if you haven't, if you're not familiar with this nonprofit, or if you're just not familiar with Giving Tuesday, um, Giving Tuesday, uh, as I said a little bit ago, was about, uh, it was founded in 2012 to kind of offset the consumerism, you know, and, and giving everybody an opportunity to, you know, share their, their time, their talent, or their treasure. And um, that's one of the reasons why I am personally uh, support Shoes That Fit, but um, because there's so many ways that you can get involved to, to, to participate. You can, you can be hands-on or you can make a donation. So before we get started or before we get back to our topic, Amy, can you tell everybody where they can find you? So the easiest way to find us is on the internet. Just go to our website, which is www.shoesthatfit, just all together, .org. Um, you can also call our office, 909-482-0050. We'd love to talk to you and tell you more about how we work. So uh, before we took a break, I was, we were talking about how do you choose the schools? And, um, you know, and you mentioned that the teachers actually identify the students. Um, so let's just say, so I'm here and I'm in Holland, Michigan, and I just stumbled across your um, organization. I was like, wow, this is great. I don't necessarily have the money to, to put towards, you know, a donation, how are other ways I can, I can support shoes that fit? When we first talk to people who are interested, you know, we find out what it is they're interested in doing, because we work in a number of different ways. We're a pretty nimble organization. So if you want to help kids, we're going to find a way to have you help. Um, oftentimes people are members of book clubs, or you mentioned your church that you're part of. We'll talk to you about, you know, what, if you have friends who would like to join together to form a group to adopt a school and you may decide you just want to just able to help 10 or 15 kids in that school that's fine what i tell people is there are very few actually i don't know of any yet but very few schools in the u.s that don't have some level of need um, and for some of these schools if you're the one child or there are a couple child you know children who don't have shoes that are appropriate for school. Um, we had a little boy who was wearing his sister's pink jelly shoes and it was just teased mercilessly and was hiding the bushes. He didn't want to go to school. Those kids really stick out. So you can make a difference in the life of a child, just a small group of children at a school who really need shoes. Or you can decide that you, know, you have to work for a company that maybe the company wants to get involved and help a larger number of kids. We can do it either with you as the volunteer buying the shoes or we can source shoes much more cheaply than most people. So we have a number of ways to work. Well, that's uh, good to know because you know I uh, have, I was a Girl Scout leader for several years. I've been that kind of person who's, you know, coordinated fundraising and different events and stuff like that. And I know sometimes it's hard, like people um, would love to be able to write a check uh, and they want to find other ways to, yeah. to get involved. And um, that, again, when I go back to the topic of Giving Tuesday, you know, that's one of the things that they um, are encouraging is that it doesn't necessarily have to be um, writing a check or making a donation. Uh, there's so many ways we can impact uh, the lives of people in our community with just small, small things like even, you know, helping a neighbor or, or lending a smile or that. So, so I'm very uh, personally, very passionate about, um, dare I say I'm an anti-check writer. I'm not, I do. <laughs> <laughs> because because I, I am a monthly giver for shoes that fit because I, I that's how strongly I believe in this organization but um, you know I just if this pandemic has taught me nothing the one thing it has taught me is that how 
connected we are and that we are all devastated together. We have all lost people together. We, nobody is immune to this. And as you mentioned earlier, um, there are families that, you know, are bypassing on the shoes because they need to put food on the table. Um, I noticed when I was going through the annual report, you have quite a few um, celebrities that, that like to be involved to help out. And I'm sure the kids love that. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, that, that's really fun. So we, um, you know, we're like, we work some, with some really great athletes and celebrities. Um, Chris Paul, um, who used to play for the Clippers and has been moving around, but he, um, he was one of our first that we worked with. And he actually, when he gets involved, he shows up personally. So he's helped done whole school deliveries here in LA and in Compton, as well as in his hometown uh, back in North Carolina. He, um, and he shows up. And the look on the kid's face, because really our program is about, you know, I, I say our secret sauce is that we're really not about shoes, we're about the kids. Mm -hmm. It's everything we do. We want to empower these kids and let them know how important they are because they really are our future. And then when you have somebody like Chris Paul showing up on the campus, talking to the kids, they are just blown away. Um, another one, Greg Popovich, um, the San Antonio Spurs have been big supporters of ours. He always shows up the last time I was out there. Obviously, we're not traveling this year, but, you know, they're rushing him off to the next thing he has to do. And he turned around and came back in and said, no, I'm having more fun here. I just gets down on the floor and shows kids how to tie their shoes. I mean, some of these kids, these young kids don't know how to do that. Um, we work, we're working with Clayton Kershaw um, to help actually 8,000 kids, 4,000 in LA and 4,000 in Dallas and this, over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. The LA Dodgers have been big supporters. Um, we feel really lucky and the, the people we work with really care about kids. And I think that's why they come to us. It's such a simple thing, but it makes such a concrete difference in the life of a child. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I was just, I could just imagine how um, excited these kids get, you know, to see, to, to, because it, it's not just the shoes now. It's like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm being seen and heard, right? Like yes. somebody recognizes me and, yeah. and thinks I'm important. And one of the things that, um, that I read uh, was that, so it's not just about the kid's self-esteem um, that is impacted obviously, because now they have, you know, some shoe, new shoes and they won't be bullied or teased, but it also increases school attendance. Like I was like all of the, all of the ways, um, well, elaborate on that. What, how, what are all the ways that these kids are impacted besides just new shoes? Yeah. So we survey the schools um, every year to find out what kind of difference they're, they're, seeing and the things they cite are increase in physical participation that they actually will play with other kids on the playground rather than just kind of sitting off by themselves so both activity and participation participation in class increase in attendance um, you find that kids get excited about coming to school when they feel good about themselves rather than you know like this little boy i told you about hiding and not wanting to attend what's interesting is we've kind of taken self-esteem off the list of things that we were citing because it's really hard to quantify self-esteem mm -hmm. And teachers were writing it back in. So we, we put that back into the survey. So it's, it's um, I think, participating with other kids, being active, showing up, and feeling like they have a voice, like they matter. And it's there, they all kind of fit together, I think. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Do you have, are there, are there any stories, um, any about the kids? Are, are there any ones that really stick out that, um, you know, just stole your heart. Yeah, there, there are a lot of them. Um, one is um, not a boy that I saw, but we got a thank you note from him, a little boy named Victor. That's the one thing we asked for is a thank you note back for the kids because we send them back to the donors. We don't require anything. <laughs> yes, we don't require it, um, but we, we like to pass that on. But little Victor was talking about wearing his grandmother's slippers to school and how bullied he was. Um, the first delivery I went to, I, I remember there was one little girl, you know, the kids, when you go to a delivery, back in the days when we could show up and be there, because you're right, it's all about connections and it's all about letting kids know that they're important. So if you have, if you're helping a whole school, we can make a party out of it because nobody's being, you know, being left out. And there was one little girl, so the whole school was getting shoes, um, it was with a company. 
and this little girl was not opening her box of shoes. And we see that from time to time, she was just holding the box. Um, and actually I went over and talked to her and she said that she'd never been given a new box of anything. She just was so excited to have a box. Um, there are just so many stories out there of kids that you know you see them jump up and start running around. They're so excited, and it's just a big party. You know, it's just it's fun to spread that kind of joy. Uh, the, one of the things that really moves me though are the teachers, and especially during this pandemic, the length to which schools and teachers will go to get their kids things that they need has really been inspiring. Um, it's just beautiful. I have a, uh, my middle daughter is a teacher. <clears throat> so I'm, I am always amazed at, uh, profoundly amazed at the people who choose to go into that profession. And not just because she's my kid, but because um, it really is, it really requires kind of a selfless spirit. Um, because especially in the public schools, um, because they are spending so much of their own money half the time because education is important to them. And, and, um, and these kids, the lives of these kids are so important to them. So I'm, I'm really not surprised that, <clears throat> I mean, this is so many teachers would give families the shirts off their back and yeah. whatever they can to help, to help the, the uh, families and the kids that they teach. And we hear that, you know, there, there are teachers out there buying shoes for their kids and they are so excited when we come in because there's only so much they can do. But you're right, teachers put a lot of themselves, a lot of their own personal finances, you know, into the pot to help these kids because they believe in them. Um, so we really, you know, we're kind of a school support program in many ways too. I think the teachers are as excited um, as the kids are sometimes to see us come in. We wish we could be everywhere. You know, you were asking about choosing schools. That's our goal. As we would like to see no child have to go to school and choose that don't fit, that hurt them or embarrass them. Um, we want to be everywhere. Uh, where are the needs right now? Where, where have you not been able to um, get into well, yet? So we're in all 50 states. So, you know, we're active. We, in 2019, we helped over 127,000 kids. But when you think of the rate of child poverty in the United States, you know, you're talking about 16 million. Um, it's huge. It's just huge. So you'll find lots of little, there are churches or, you know, a rotary club here. Lots of people are doing this. And what we want to do is really kind of pull us all together into a movement and really Part of what we're able to do because we've become large enough is to source, source shoes at lower, because shoes are expensive, but to source them at lower costs and get shoes donated. Um, we'd like to see this um, really take off like wildfire. We're gonna take one more quick break. When we come back, I want to uh, talk about um, giving in the time of COVID. <laughs> What does it look like in a pandemic? Oh, I'm so ready for this to be over. Anyway, you are listening to Three Things I've Learned with Susan Dolce, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. So today we're talking about giving. <laughs> it's November. I can't believe it's November. I still can't believe Thanksgiving's next week. I don't have anything planned. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to have smaller, ga smaller gatherings this year. Um, but it's still the month of gratitude and counting our blessings. And um, I'm talking today with Amy Fass. She's the CEO of the nonprofit, the national nonprofit, Shoes That Fit. And um, Amy, can you please share again where people can find you online and how people can donate? Our website is at www.shoes that fit or one word.org. So before we took a break, we were talking, I mentioned pandemic fatigue and, and how does an organization as large as yours still manage to um, provide uh, when kids aren't in school? I know here in my neck of the woods, um, the uh, our governor just closed the high schools again. She's keeping the elementary and middle schools open because those kids, <clears throat> first of all, they can't be home alone, right? Um, and they really need the support of the schools. Uh, and I, 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 I'm quite certain um, 
you know, so many of these kids are still struggling uh, just based on what happened in the, in the spring. So uh, also the other thing that we're coming up, so as I mentioned in the very beginning, we still don't have a COVID relief bill. And I was reading today in Politico, how many of the safety nets that were in place are all going to expire. Um, the extended self-employment, and the, um, the uh, what's, the, what's the word I want? What's the verb I want for so people couldn't be evicted? Can't think of the verb I want. Anyway, all of these safety nets are gonna expire and nobody seems to be doing anything. Families are gonna be laid off. I mean, uh, parents are gonna be laid off. They're gonna be furloughed. Um, I know our food pantry here, the shelves just keep getting cleaned, wiped out. Um, there's still cars, there's still long lines, and now it's Thanksgiving. And like I mentioned before, as a Girl Scout leader, I remember every Thanksgiving, <clears throat> every troop would put together, we'd buy the big rubber made bins and kids would come with their, you know, their stuffing and their cranberry sauce and their olive fixings and gift cards and stuff. And none of that has changed people. But we still need that support on uh, because as we mentioned, if people are struggling to put food on the table, they're not spending money on shoes and school supplies. And so we have to, I mean, there's so many unintended consequences from um, focusing on like one thing that needs to be uh, taken care of like food, there's all these other things that still need to be addressed. So Amy, now that I had my monologue on, <laughs> on, on pandemic fatigue. Um, how, how is it working now uh, with schools in session or not in session? How are you still reaching the kids with the shoes? Yeah, we had to pivot pretty quickly this spring as many of us did. Um, and we were wondering how we were going to do that. But what, we've done a number of things. We've, um, we still do deliveries on campuses because families are often coming through to pick up School supplies, many of them are picking up meals. Um, this is, you know, we've had, I know in LAUSD, anybody can come and pick up a meal now. It doesn't even have to be, you don't have to prove you're an LAUSD student because the need is just so enormous. But we have done deliveries where we've actually delivered shoes through the schools, just through a drive up where you just kind of put things in the in the back seat. I've been amazed, I think I, I mentioned this before, at the lengths to which teachers and schools are going to make sure that their kids, you know, get what they need. So we've had deliveries where we've actually because we've been doing this so long, we've got a really good data base of um, to project what sizes uh, kids are going to need across the school. And the larger the school, the you know, better our data is. So we've actually shipped out um, half again as many shoes as the school needs, and just let them ship the extras back to us so they can take their time and letting kids, you know, try on their shoes and make sure they get a good fit. Like, we're working in all sorts of different ways. It's um, Shoes are hard, uh, much harder than clothes, and I think this is something people don't think about. But if you think about the number of sizes you have, I mean, we start we go K through twelve. So we start with a little kid size eight, you know, goes up through twelve, you know, thirteen, and then comes back down to one. And then we have kids who are wearing size fifteen and sixteen shoes, which you can't even buy in most stores. Right. And that's part of how we've gotten in with some of the NBA players is we have needed to reach out to. Um, to find shoes that size. We had one boy in Pomona, that's where our warehouse is, who had been being homeschooled because he had grown, outgrown all his shoes and they couldn't send him to school. So it, it's really amazing. We, have, we get um, wonderful deliveries from the NBA of size 15, 16, even 17 shoes. Uh, I think Shaq was a 22. We had to get one really huge size from him at one point in time. Um, but it, it's complicated because of the size. And you can't wear shoes that don't fit if they're way too big or they're too small. It's painful. You get blisters. It does not work. So it's, um, it's been interesting. It's, it, 2020 has been a year, but we are as busy as ever. One of the things that really warms my heart, you know, we have a lot of business um, partners and some of them have had to really pull back. Businesses are hurting. Mm -hmm. Individual support has actually gone up this year. And I really think it's because people want to make a difference. They want to do something to help. And this is something that's so concrete. Um, and that really warms my heart to see so many people who really care and, and just want to do something to make people's lives better. Yeah, and that uh, calls to mind, um, uh, I, back in my corporate days, you know, 
reach out to your um, HR people and find out because a lot of corporations do matching gifts. Yes. And yeah, and that's not to, I mean, it's, I think it's under, uh, it's, people don't really realize it. I think it's right. underutilized. Um, and there are a lot, a lot of times these big corporations are looking for places to give their money away to yep. anyway. Yep. So um, absolutely reach out and find out if your corporation, even the smaller companies, a lot of times will have matching gifts. Right. So do you, is that, how much of that do you how we, that we actually we try to include that on our website. You know, do you have a company that will match gifts? Um, because I think companies really like to give where their employees are giving. They want to support their employees that way. So you, you had mentioned for people who don't like writing a check, you know, what can they do? But follow us on social media, reshare things, let other people know what's going on. Um, that that's an enormous way, you know, as, and as you're saying, you know, with corporate matching gifts, just let people know that there are other other ways they can direct funds. Um, to help purchase shoes. Um, yeah, so you mentioned social media because I know that's it's a little different from your social media handles a little different than the website. Can you share that? Yes, um, just look for shoes that fit charity. Um, often when you Google shoes that fit, you'll come up. But we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn um, and look for shoes that fit charity. So we were talking about um, some of your favorite stories. Um, I'm going <clears> to <throat> just, because it's my, it's my podcast and I want to talk about it. <laughs> um, the reason I, like I said, when I first found out about it, it was my daughter and she was a student teaching in New York city. And um, just in the spirit of it, giving Tuesday. So I had just started my business, my coaching business. And this isn't to pat myself on the back. This was just something that I was very, just felt very passionate about. And I said, whoever, whatever the money I get is for my first client, I'm going to take it. And I have three daughters. And I was like, I want each of you to choose a charity and I will divide it up three ways. And it's going to go. Cause that was just for me personally, it was like, I felt really blessed to be able to start my business. And that was my way of giving back. And that was the first time that we gave tissues that fit and, um, and we've been doing it ever since. So, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, like I would love to hear, uh, some more of the stories or even stories about the teachers who, um, you know, how they found out. I think there were, I, I read something about, um, and I apologize if you, if I put you on the spot and you don't know the story, mm -hmm. but it was, um, a, a, a kid handed a teacher a note. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I know the story. Um, yeah, in this instance, and you know, things like this happen all the time, but there was a little girl who just desperately needed some shoes and she asked her teacher, she didn't want to say anything out loud, but she passed on a note to her teacher and said, can you, can you help me? Um, and as I said, there are just some really great teachers out there. And I know there are a lot of teachers who are bu buying things for their kids out of their own personal funds. Um, we have had, especially during this pandemic, when we've called schools, I think people kind of, everything at first was kind of shutting down and they were shocked that we were still going to be providing shoes. We've had teachers cry. You know, it's like, this is uh -huh. the first good piece of news we've gotten, you know, that you're still going to be there to help, to help the kids. So it's, um, I love my job. You know, it's, it's, I, I just, I love my job, you know, and it's, it's all about, you said it before, but it's all about connections and connecting people and helping, giving people an opportunity to do something. Um, Cause I think many of us feel kind of helpless right now, kind of at yeah. loose ends, a little bit trapped, you know, what can you do? And, you know, if you, if you can donate, donate, if you want to get your friends together and adopt a school, adopt a school. If you can't afford to donate, just follow us on social media, share it out, spread the word. Cause there are lots of, the need is overwhelming. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, we can do this. We, we can take care of our kids. This is something we can do if we all put our minds to it. And it makes you feel really good. It does. And that's what we're going to talk about. That's going to be the final part of this interview. Uh, we're going to take one more quick break. I'm talking with Amy Fass, the CEO of Shoes That Fit. This is Three Things I've Learned. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Three Things I've Learned. Today, I've been talking with Amy Fass. She's the CEO of the national nonprofit Shoes That Fit. And we've been talking about 
Giving Tuesday, and we've been talking about um, shoes that fit in particular. And when we were we were chatting a little bit in the break, and the story came to mind because Amy was saying how you don't know you don't know how you impact not not just only the, somebody else's life, but especially the life of a child. And um, my mom passed away about a week and a half ago, and she my mom was one of those people who she would do anything to help a kid, and um, like I said, this memory just popped up in my head and I, I, I didn't even remember the story. And I'd been on Facebook. This was like, this was a long time ago when I first got a Facebook account. <clears throat> and you know, like your childhood friends find you and they're like, hey, you know, remember me, blah, 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 blah. And so it was a childhood friend and we had started chatting and she shared the story. She said, do you remember it was eighth grade graduation and I didn't have anything to wear. We were supposed to wear white dresses and I didn't have anything to wear. And my mom couldn't afford to get me anything. And your mom lent me a white dress so I could wear it to graduation. And she's like, I'll never forget how special that made me feel. And I was just choked up and I didn't even, I, I didn't even recall that happening. I mean, my mom was such a huge generous soul and, um, so when we do this, when, you know, like shoes, clothes, school supplies, food, we're, we are impacting the lives of these children. And, and as Amy mentioned, when we were chatting, she's like, some, one of these kids might be president, you know, one might be, what's another great job? <laughs> uh, you know, a, part, a doctor, a researcher, her Cures cancer. I mean, just, cures cancer. Yeah. Yes. So, so Amy, I'd like to know how this has impacted your life. How doing this job and being a part of this organization organization has impacted you. So now you're going to get me emotional. Um, there are a number of ways. I think I'm just um, amazed at how much, how many people. I think most people really want to make a difference. Um, and that it brings out the best in people. Um, and that's really heartening to see. The other thing is um, how many stories people have of their own about not having shoes. I mean, I've talked to CEOs um, and, and you can tell, you can tell when people get this, not, not everybody gets it, but when people really get the impact of shoes, CEOs who've talked about being the poor kid, you know, in their community and walking, you know, living in the Northwest and walking to school, you know, with holes in their boots, you know, in the snow and, or, you know, wearing shoes that just embarrassed them. You know, we had one of my, my board chair, the first board chair when I came on the organization had had to wear these really clunky orthotic shoes and she was always being teased yeah and they caught up. <laughs> so people you know people relate with the pain they relate with yeah. the shame they relate with the embarrassment um I, i'm amazed at how many people have their own their own shoe stories but i'll have to say the biggest impact for me and i, I really miss this right now i i don't go to all the shoe deliveries M many of them are done very privately especially if it's a few kids that's why we have kids who think it's their teachers who have given them the shoes mm -hmm. which is just fine with us. I think that's beautiful. Um, but when we do do a big delivery and Chris Paul or Popovich or somebody comes on campus to actually spend time with some of these kids, um, people live in very different circumstances. And I feel lucky that I've been able to see people in all sorts of different states, different schools, different um, cities. And then you see these kids and the, the joy in their face, and the talent you know is inherent in each of them. And they have no control over how they've been born, you know, where they've been born and what their families have and what their communities have and somehow trying to bridge that gap and letting them know that they're important, that they matter, their lives matter, their futures matter, that we're depending on them, our society is depending on them. Um, it's just, it's, it's humbling. Um, I feel like in some ways we do so little and yet it's, it's, it's something and it creates bridges so the name of or blah, 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 blah. the name of the organization again is Shoes That Fit. You can find them at shoesthatfit.org on on the internet, and they are they have a couple of well, one it's a 
shoes that fit charity, correct? On Facebook and Instagram. So um, as I always say, name is show. It's called Three Things I've Learned. And sometimes I ask my guest, but in this case, I've been schooled again. <laughs> and I'm going to share what I've learned. Um, first, uh, this pandemic has only increased the need for kids to have shoes. While their parents are most, a lot of them are just struggling to put food on the table. Um, these times are, um, these have been unprecedented times. Um, and we, we are all connected people. We are all in this together and we're, we can get through this together uh, if we realize that, you know, God made us all one. We're all, the, we're all, we're all one being. Um, also, the new shoes not only improve kids' self-esteem, which I now learned has been taken off the table because it's hard to quantify. <laughs> <laughs> we but, put it back on the table. Okay, put it back on the table. But they also like it improves their attendance, um, which totally makes sense because they are. Um, they're not embarrassed and they're, you know, excited to go to school and uh, their physical activity and behavior. Totally. I've got to say this. There is a flock of turkeys walking outside my window. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, look at the flock of turkeys walking outside my window here in Holland, Michigan. Okay. And finally, I'm going to take a quote from the annual report because I love this, this quote. Um, Even when the world doesn't go according to plan, we can still make a difference. And right now the world has not gone according to plan. Things are crazy. We have to button down, back, button down the hatches and, and hold, down, hold on for a little while longer. I think if we can get through the spring, we're gonna be okay. But again, Giving Tuesday is uh, on December 1st. Um, yeah, I would be delighted if you would support Shoes That Fit. Uh, I'm very passionate about this organization, but there are so many other organizations and, um, and it doesn't, as I said, it doesn't have to be about writing a check, you know, it, it, breaking your neighbor's leaves, baking somebody a meal, uh, helping somebody with a flat tire. I mean, there are all ways that we can touch the lives of people around us uh, and it doesn't have to cost us anything. Um, so please consider participating in some way, shape or form on December 1st with Giving Tuesday. Random act of kindness go a long way. <laughs> thank you, Amy. I really appreciate you oh, being here you today. So this much. has been great. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So if you'd like to learn more about my coaching packages, you can visit my website at susandolci.com. And there's the turkeys are still going by. Anyway, fun fact. <laughs> anyway, we all have a story to tell. You can live in the story or you can transform the story. It's your choice. Change your story. Change our world. Hashtag Storyfield. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>